so we're finally starting. Hopefully that's well, I'm gonna listen together. In any case, um, we had a request on how to work for ankle strength. And one way is to take uh, a small ball and take it right above your ankles, below the swell of your calf here, and squeeze them together. And then what we want to do is just press and lightly keep the inner legs into the ball. And you can start by bending the knees but keeping the foot grounded. And noticing that when you bend the knees, because knee, hip, knee and hip flexion should be linked. So you want to think about lifting the tail out behind you, spreading and lifting your six bones, basically opening the pelvic diamond when you have the knees bent. And as you go down, Think about really still having the back pretty vertical. So we're not going into a deep squat here, but you're trying to stay more vertical for this body surgeon. So you press down as you inhale, push the feet, spread the feet, and push into the floor to come up. Exhale. So we inhale to go down, tail lifts up, pelvic down and expands. Exhale to lift. And press down again, bending at the knees, flexing at the hip joint. Exhale, rise, and we'll do one more with that. Now, balance is an issue for you. You might want to stand your wall and have your hand on the wall, or you could even use like your roller and let me take your fingertips on top of it. But now we're lifting up into row bay. So you would tip your weight forward, go up onto the balls of your feet, and exhale to lower. And another way to find better balance is to have to send the arms out. Now also squeeze the ball because that's going to make you feel the inside line of your leg muscles and your feet muscles as you go up and down. So inhale, hugging the ball in, you lift up, roll bay, and exhale and sink down. And let's do that again. Inhale to rise, exhale to release. And working with slowly here, what you're doing is going to be helpful to Strengthen the muscles around your ankles as you lift here and then exhale and come down. You want to come down as slowly as you can. And then we rise again. The body weight does tip a little forward and then we go down again. Now we're going to add two this and inhale to bend the knees. So I was told to call this a demi plie because the heels are staying down. And then you'll punch the knees forward as you pick up the heels. Push off into row bay and then lower. You know what? I need to stand on this. A little more padding for my four feet. So we're going down first. Knees punch forward. Now notice the shoulders, the head stay at the same height on the ground. Lift to row bay and then lower the heels. So we go down, demi plie, punch these forward, lift the heels higher, come all the way up with straight legs, roll back here, and then down. And again, you can go down, push these forward, lift the heels, come all the way up, and lower. And then we do the reverse. So you can go up to a high hip position, bend the knees forward, lower the heels down, and straighten the legs. So lifting up, knees forward, heels lower, straighten down. One more. Lift here to roll back. Inner thighs, inner legs work. Bend the knees, heels still off the ground. Now lower the heels and then straighten. So that I would say is like a really good way to build some strength and balance muscle action around your ankles. Into a little bit of work here with the roll. I was I seek your request if you have anything to do as always. Thank you so much. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and lay down on the roller. So you have a seat with it at your tail, and you're sort of supported from your tail to the base of your skull. You're grounded, maybe on the four side inches apart. I'm going to extend the arms out to the side. Just begin by rocking a little bit from side to side. 
side. Massaging into the inner edge of the scapula. Ideally, hugging the back of the hands stay grounded. Shifting the weight in his knee as you shift your weight from one side to the other across the wall. I feel like I'm just beginning to open up your chest to stretch those pec muscles and also massage the muscles in your back. They're probably tired and sore from taking the weight on over our tech. Over our books. And then come back to center. So balance yourself steady through the feet. And then lift the arms. We now embrace as the arms rise. Exhale, pull the arms open slowly up and down. The arms sink to the ground. And inhale, arms rise. And exhale and open. So you can imagine breathing it so deeply that we suck the air in. Arms lift into that back knee, and then exhale, press the air of your lungs to push the arms aside and down. And inhaling the shoulder blades roll through sideways and start to curve up around the edges of the rib cage. And then we open the blades open to drop down, circling back towards the roll itself. So inhale, arms rise, and exhale, and release back down. Now we'll lift the arms straight up to the ceiling. Hands the width of your shoulders and lift it with hands up as you inhale, exhale, release the scapula down, the shoulder blades down, and the roll beneath you. Good. Hands rise, pull the shoulders up, and sink the blades down to bring the arms and fingers away from the ceiling. Inhale, ride the arms straight up in the air, and then exhale and bring the straight down. So while the arms are going up, remaining perpendicular to the floor, the scapula has to curve around the curve of the rib cage, and then at the end of the right movement, relax and release down the side of the roll. So we do that one more time to look here, and exhale to release. Palms turn forward as you inhale, exhale, let the arms to the side of your body, and we inhale, let the arms up to the ceiling, and exhale back, and then bring the arms forward, and it's all the way forward and back. Arms lift here, knees in the parallel, they stretch behind you, you hold the abdominal wall so the back does not arch additionally, and then bring it back down. We're retaining the natural curves of your spine. So you want the tail to be heavy, the shoulder blades to break down towards the floor, and the waistline to be slightly lifted up to define that natural arch of the lumbar curve. So we go up with the arms and exhale back, the belly to the feet. And then you have bring the arms forward and then all the way forward and down, tugging the shoulders away from the ears. Let's bring your hands to your shoulders and then circle in and up. Exhale out wide around and down and lift again. Circle all the way around and to the ground. Scoop the air and the arm bone, the humerus, the upper arm bone, is rotating here on the surface of the shoulder blade. So that you get this rotation that happens with circumduction here in the joint. Complete the circle with two hooks. Always go down and then the back. Then we lift and narrow and down again. So circling around here. You can literally keep the scapula too. Get a little bit more release in your upper back here. Taking the shoulders and releasing them down. One more circle in this direction. And then extend the arms forward, pull right through the arms. Arms lift up again in parallel, and you extend your back towards your ears, circle wide as you exhale. At the end of the movement, turn the palms down and take the arms up and back. Exhale to reach out and spread the fingers wide. You can open the palms and then turn the palms down. Arms lift and stretch behind you, circle forward and around. And then one last one. Trying to make the shape a little larger with every repetition as you reach a little further away from your center. And now reverse, palms up to circle wide, and then lift the arms as they start to get back from your ears. Exhale, dive the arms forward and down. Palms up to reach out. Stretch behind you. Exhale, push the air down as you empty your lungs. And we do two more. 
Full breath all the way back. Full exhale all the way forward. Once more. Find that openness in your chest increase as we stay here on our roll. We'll do one more thing here. So take your thumbs together, the index fingers together. The hands and fingers are in line with your forearm diamond arms. So we take the whole shape back like a picture frame in your face. Inhale back, exhale forward to float the hands right over the low backs. And inhale back. So the shoulder blades slide towards the waistline. And then forward and the blades sink to the ground. The shoulder blades stay in position as you bring them up to 90 degrees and go further back. The blades need to widen across the lower part of the blade and work diagonally out towards your hip bone press. And then we bring the arms forward and up and then exhale them again. Take so the blades again and exhale. Press the arms behind you. The hands are slightly deep to each other so you firm up the inside line of your arms. Okay, and now from here, just arm to the side, open the arms, roll it a little bit again, massage out any place that still needs it, and then we're going to do slide off of the roller. Okay, and take it across under your legs. All right, so here if you hold the roller. And you pull the knees into your chest and lift the feet up towards the ceiling. I'll take my right leg back and then left foot forward. You can do the same or reverse. But in any case, we're going to switch legs. One goes back, one goes forward, and switch again. As you come back to the leg, you feel a little tug into your hamstring. Try to be sure that that stretch is happening in the middle of the muscle, not behind the knee. Not at the sits bone. And then as the leg goes forward, so you can reach it out and down. So maybe you feel a little bit of stretch across the top of the bed. And we switch again here. Okay. And of course, if you feel like it's too much for you, you can bend the knees, that will lessen the weight, but also reduce the stretch a little bit. You're going to bring the left leg up to meet the right one. And actually, go to the legs and then pull the legs sideways apart. Inhale to open. Exhale to close from the pelvic diamond and the upper inner thighs. Inhale, let's stretch apart. Exhale, lift to close them. Again, inhale, open. The gravity assists you here. Exhale, work the inner thigh muscles as you lift your feet and lower back. Exhale to close. And now the right leg is out to the side. The left leg stays vertical. Exhale, drag it up. And now we leave the right leg vertical. Take the left leg out and down to the side. Exhale, pull it up. Take your time. So it's a little less momentum and a little bit more strength that accomplishes that. Right leg out. And go a little slower than gravity would like to drop the leg. And then exhale. Pull it up. Sometimes it's nice to have a moment when the leg is in full extension. Do not just reach out and up, but hold it out there, lengthen, reach, and then exhale to lift it. Do one more set of these. Right leg going open and down. Left leg still vertical. Be sure your pelvis isn't shifting. Keep that opposite hip rounded. Pull it up to the top of the leg. And then one more here. Press into the roller with your arms so that you feel it more in your upper glutes. Okay, and now let's bend the knees in and extend the right leg up. We're doing a bicycle, so the right leg goes forward and down. You extend the left leg back and then you reach here, trying to reach your toes for the mat and slide the foot in. That works best if your leg doesn't go past the mat. Because then you curl up the mat and you try to drag it all in. I'm thinking of the feet staying 180 degrees away from each other and work for the stretch that works for you, right? 
and then let's reverse. Slide this foot to the mat and skate it across the mat and slide it off the floor. So lift the air up at the top of your foot and the top of your shin. Time when we're set. And then both legs up. Bend your left knee into your chest and extend the right leg forward down to rest the heel on the mat. So pull the left leg in a little bit. If your right knee needs to bend to get the stretch that works for you, that's fine. <laughs> I'd like it to be as straight as possible. Now it could also depend, like if you have the roller in the right spot, if you need to adjust it, just do that. You want to be sure the arch of your back is not uncomfortable. It's pretty much just what it should be. And let's switch legs. So this position with one knee pulled into the chest typically makes it easier for people to extend one leg forward off the top of the roller. We also have done this with the one foot grounded and then the same side arm going back. So you can always adjust this for what feels best in your body with your preferences. Okay, and both legs forward. Only if that's fine for your low back. And if that feels good, take both arms back and stretch open the front line of your body. Just breathe in slowly, deeply, deep breathe out, and then a long, deep exhale. One more breath. Then the arms feet come around. You can bend the knees. Be your ground and lift hips up in a bridge and slide the roller out. Okay. And then we are coming up to sitting to roll back into our hundreds. So I choose to do this. It's not the traditional way to get into the boots, but it is the way that gets you the best upper up curl and usually easier on everyone's necks. So sit upright, right on your sit bones, hands can be to the back of your legs or forward. And then you curl your spine down. You lift the tail first to round the back and then bring your body down to your best upper up curl. Stop at the tip of the scapula, hold the knees in, embrace them, pull yourself up a little deeper. And then you can extend the legs and reach the arms forward to come. Inhale in and exhale. Deep breath in and a long breath out. Try to press the edges of the feet, the edges of your legs together. If they don't match up, if they don't meet, you know, that could just be structure. So you can always take a ball or a pad of some kind, either a folded up towel between part of your legs, maybe your feet, maybe your thighs, to give you that feeling of reaching in. And engaging the inner thigh line. To deepen the curve, you're watching the abdominal wall lift as you breathe in, sink as you breathe out. Traditional Pilates to the navel is fine. Your first of the two, exhale as you pin your belly down and deep towards the mat. You only need to belly exhale now, and you can want the abdominal wall to lift to get full back from that again. One more breath here. And then we lay everything down, rock your head side to side, and then extend the legs forward, pull up and connect. So we lift the arms up to the ceiling, anchor the shoulder blades, slide the arms back towards the ear, and then coming back with the arms, head neck and shoulders, scale and dive over your legs, throw the legs back, back over, take that stretch here, feel the length in the back of your legs, and then press the legs forward. Pull the tail up through your thighs, articulate the spine down, one inch one vertebra at a time, and then reach the arms behind you. So, you know, you can adapt this as needed. A third band is helpful. Sometimes people need uh, weights on their ankles. You dive over, stretch the belly up and over, and imagine a ball. And then as you come back, imagine that ball rolling up the front of your body, 
the height of your arms will also determine whether your choice of position is helpful or not. So if you need a little more assistance, you lower the arms. If you want a little more challenge, you lift the arms to see where you should be in each part of the movement. It's going to be different as your practice changes, depending on kind of day or week you have. So let's do one more. Here, I step all the way up and forward. Curve over your legs, stretch that forward between the thumbs, and back we go again. Place the spine into the ground, it close to the floor with a nice steady rhythm. We circle the arms around, and here we'll reach our third band. Pull the right knee into your chest <clears throat> without using the band first, just pull the knee in, and we're doing some knee skirts here. So one or both hands to the knee, circling the leg on the socket. And then we'll reverse the circles. Let's just get a little stretch in here first. So pull the knee all the way to the chest. And then pull the knee towards the right armpit, keep the left hip grounded. Lift the knee and take a diagonal across towards the left armpit now. So you feel that stretch, lateral hip, lateral upper thigh. And then we'll open the knee out to the side, 90 degrees from the torso, from the other thigh. Again, keep weight in your left hip as the right knee falls almost at a figure four towards the ground. And then pull up that right knee, cross it over. You can lift the hip, you can extend the arm out. Give yourself that stretch here. And just breathe into it. Change the angle of the knee and see how that affects where you feel the stretch. And then we unwind, come back to center. Pull that knee into the body nice and tight, and then stretch the leg forward. Should feel a lot lower, more relaxed on the other leg. We're going to do the same little series here for these stretches for the left leg. So pull the left knee into your chest here. Release it forward to start the stir. So you just circle the knee to move that femur head on the joint surface. Just deep into the socket and right face. Try to keep your pelvis steady here. We're still using our core to keep the torso calm while you move the leg. Reverse the circles. And then pull the knee again in towards the left chest and then towards the left armpit. The right hip bone is down. Weighted and heavy here on your mat. A nice slow breath as you get a longer exhale. It's more relaxing for the body and more healthy stretch. And now let's pull that left knee diagonally across towards the right armpit. If you take your left hand and press into the crease between leg and pelvic girdle, and just like push that away from the waistline. Do a little bit more length there and that across the hip and out towards your sits bone. Take the knee up and now open the leg out to the side, put the breast on the floor, and you can just drop the knee out to the side, 90 degrees from the bottom. And then either use your hand under the leg to support it a little bit and let it turn and relax into your hand, or you can push it open or pressing the right hip down. And then we'll pick up the knee, cross it over, the right hand holds the knee and presses it down. Up down the steps, look at that. Keep the shoulder blade grounded as you spiral away from it. So you get a big diagonal stretch across your back, as well as getting that stretch into the outer thigh and into a side 
then we try to change the angle of the leg slightly to see where that change the stretch of your glute and the back. And then pull the hip down to lift the leg up. Pull it in once more to the left chest. And then extend the leg forward. Great, now that one had a chance to release and let go. And we'll pull the right leg in and take the band around the right foot. Bend with the ball of the foot and arch. And lift the leg up to the ceiling. Pull it back as much as you want to. Get the steps in your hamstring. Inhale to point the foot. Exhale to flex it. Just a couple of times, working we'll through the calf muscle and stretching it also. And we end with a soft point and circle. Inhale across the body, keep the hip down and go low, out to the side, around and lift to the seat. And reach again. Let's see, out long, around, and then up to the sky. Short inhale, long exhale. The torso stays heavy, especially the opposite hip. So it's putting weight into the side of the pelvic girdle. It's opposite from where the foot is at any point in time. Up to the top here and reverse. Out to the side, exhale forward around, across the body, lift it up. Keep reaching out to a beautiful oval in the air at the top of your foot. And keep the body grounded. Feel the work shift in that lower abdominal wall. You organize the pelvic girdle, but you pull the calf, stay grounded, stay glued to your mat. One more circle, one more breath. Make it a long exhale so you feel the contraction of the abdominal wall at the end of the movement. And here we take both ends of the bend into the right hand and we open the right leg out to the side and rock it here. Left hip is down and can rest on the hip bone and press that down. Exhale to lift the leg up to the ceiling. Switch hands, cross it over, extending the arm out. Reach long through the foot and rotate the leg internally. Shoulder blade heavy. If you pull that leg a little closer to your shoulder, get the stretch that works for you. Exhale, hip goes down, leg lifts in the air. We're going to do that stretch one more time because sometimes you just need to. Take the left hip, round it, press it into the floor, the right leg out to the right. Do a gentle little bouncing. Nothing too dramatic. Just kind of ease that leg into the socket. And exhale, bring it back up. Switch hands, cross it over, extend. Reach out long and then rotate the leg internally to increase the stretch and feel. At the angle you want it. If hamstrings are super tight, you can always, or you're just slightly tight, you can bend in a little bit and see how that might release things for you to get the stretch more specifically in the part of the hamstring that needs it. Exhale, pull the hip to the ground to lift the leg up. Give it another little tug, feel the stretch in the back of the leg, and then fold that knee in, the band comes off. Embrace it in tight and then reach it falling down. And you can, of course, feel that it's dropped even more than it did after the knee stretch series that we did earlier, which also is really, really useful for getting that glass to open. And here we go with the left leg. So we bend the foot, we need to look up to the ceiling. And then we're just starting with some point and flex through the foot and the ankle. As you lift your heels, take a big deep down for your system. And then we end with a soft point. Slide the elbows closer to your waist, move the shoulders away from your ears. And we take the leg across the body and exhale, go low. You pivot from your elbows to keep tension out of the wrist. 
and you need to go. We're taking we're going to inhale for a quarter of the distance of the circle that Billy is drawing in space. And then of course you'll exhale for three quarters of the distance. Three knees are all the way up to the top of the movement. Once again, go ahead and push forward with the foot, pull back with the opposite hip. And one more time. Breathe this a little bit longer as you stretch the muscles and open the joints. Now here reverse, out to the side, exhale, all the way down, around, and then up to the ceiling. We're just circling, stretching out into space. And we're grounding ourselves to anything that's on the mat, being either bolted into the floor, glued to the ground, or a heavy weight on top of you, holding you down. Or the leg then is free to move. That'll give you more stretch and also give you more work in the floor. We'll complete with one more circle here. And we're out to the top, and then the left hand pulls the hips to the back. Take the leg out to the side, the right hip will stay down, and you just rock the leg a little bit towards your shoulder and away. Exhale to bring the leg up to the ceiling, switch hands, cross it over, extend the leg over, reaching it internally. The left shoulder blade is also grounded here. Pull the leg a little closer to the right shoulder, to the back wall. Increase the stretch where you can. And we'll lift the leg up and do one more set of those stretches. Open the leg out to the side. Give it a little rock here. Exhale, pull it up to the ceiling. And then switch hands again, and that leg moves to the right, and move to the left. And then we take the leg internally, spin it from the femur, so the knee and the toes point towards the ground. Find a place that gives you the stretch on the angle of work, you can keep a stretch in the floor. And then exhale, come diagonally down, right shoulder to waist to left hip, to lift the leg up, and pull the leg back again. And then pull the knee in, stand to the side, and brace that leg in one more time. So you press it into your chest. And then extend the leg forward next to the right one. Give both legs a little bit of a shake, a little relief. This should feel very different from the way it did when we started. And then let's pull the right knee in, the left leg lifts the ceiling, and drop forward and up, forward with the ball. So sit near the front of your mat, <coughs> hands to the shin. Lift the feet up to the front of the top, round the back, pelvis forward. Inhale, lift the tail over your shoulder blade, but in the air, exhale, come forward, reach down between your heels. And then again. When you inhale, just the tip of the blade, start your exhale, come back and up. And if rolling's not good for your back, or doesn't feel right, number one, check that you have enough padding underneath. But you can also do a micro roll. You just pull back an inch or so and then forward. This is what we do for our pregnant clients and also the ones with osteoporosis. But it can be a nice thing just to get super low abdominal compression. All right, I'm just going to do one more roll in three. Take it all the way back and then all the way forward and slap on the side. And we're working into the abs here. So right hand ankle, left hand to the shin. And then push the left leg away. Pull the right knee into your body, elbows wide. Inhale to switch the legs. Pull one in and one away from you. Come in nice and tight and switch the legs nice and low and roll. You want to stay in a deep curve. And keep moving both straight in and out of the socket. There's a straight line away from your head, and then a straight line as it pulls into your chest. Do one more. We're going to end with the left leg pulls in. Pull both knees in, left forward and up. And then just open the knees, guide your hip down. Lift out your back. And then we're coming up again. We're going to reset that upper up curl. So curve down. Take your time. Place your spine gently into the ground. 
stuff at the base of the rib cage at the tip of the scapula. Hopefully, it plugs in one hand to each chin. And now inhale, stretch up to the sail. Circle wide with the arms as you embrace the legs in. You can advance, taking the legs further down, the arms further back, and then pull everything back in. So you reach long. Exhale. Just watch that if you take the arms behind you, you're not dropping out of your upper curl. We stay focused on the work you built in your upper abdominals. It's not about the range of motion with the limbs, it's about the work you get in your center. And of course, they're related. We just want to be sure that we don't lose our form as we work towards bigger movements. Put it all in, lay it down, arms open, feet to the ground. Have that pose knees sway to the right and then to the left. We're putting extra stretches into the ad series. That's a request for extra stretching today. One more. That's seven. And now let's again go forward and up to come back and down into our sitter. So again, looking down at your abs, curl the toe up, gradually pull yourself down. Find that deep upper curl right as it extends up and holds onto the shin. Other the ankle left leg extends. Pull that right leg towards you and now sit your legs. And try to lift your body towards the inside of your knee. Reach it up as high as you can towards the ankle. She puts the foot. Legs work here. Going arcs parallel to each other in opposite directions as you move. So if you down your nose towards your abs, we'll end here with the left leg up. Both legs up, hands get behind your head. Pull your head high, elbows down and in. Now press the legs out and away. Pause, exhale, and lift them up. So be respectful of your body. Take your legs out to a place where you feel the work increase in your abs, but you're still able to support your back, right? If you just go for a big fast movement, you'll probably arch your back and potentially injure your spine. You can get as much work as you need by going really slowly here. So push the legs out, lengthen, exhale, and pull the legs up. And to the ceiling. If you really want to challenge, you can go over to the count of eight and then lift to the count of eight. Try that one more time. Doesn't matter if you're only moving three inches, two inches, as long as you do it super slow, you can feel that work in both directions. So bend your knees in, let's roll up to sitting. Do it a modification of the variation here for the elbow to me using the dead end around the feet. Heels are grounded, we're lifted together. And <coughs> this to the right, pull the right elbow back, and move it up, and then roll down on the right side of your spine, come down to the right shoulder blade, and then tip your ear towards the knees, come all the way up. Center, and then go to the left, and then down the left side of your spine. Up, so with that big oblique twist. You can continue with that and put the band aside and just take the arms forward and then maybe pull the right elbow back as you go down to the right side. Touch the tip of the blade to the ground. Exhale, dig your feet into the floor and come up. Center here, pull the left elbow back a little wide as you go out. Pull that right hip grounded. Come down, exhale, pull it up. You always use your hands to the right if you need it, and then we'll twist to the right again. You're going to use your exhale before you need it. 
wait till you're just before it's too late. Over set of these. Everyone feel that? Either with or without the band, it's, it can be as intense as you want it to be. And then we come center and we go into our spine stretch. Here's an exercise where you may want to elevate your hips if you know the back line of your body is your hands are just tight. Otherwise, we're just going to sit right on the sit bone, extend the arms forward, press the arms down with the chest. Lift your hair while you look at the horizon. Look down your nose now, tipping the chin to the chest, and bend your neck to bring them forward out into the foot. Then move through the upper back, then the back to the lower back, so reach you out in the curve, out, down, and over. Stretch your spine, stretch your hamstrings. Push down with your legs and articulate the spine up, put it up. Like you're being filled with yoga from the bottom to the top. And then look down and again. Go out, over, and down, and curve. Try to make it sequential so you're not just immediately flexing at your hips or bending at your waist or bending at the bra line. You want to come in each direction, sequentially working your way, either stacking the spines, vertebra, or flowing through them one after the next. So the more mobility you can create here. The more flexibility you get in the full length of your spine. You don't want to just go, go down and up and cross. And one more time. Bend out, over, and down here. To out, and then let's hold. Pull the chest back. Reach for your feet, open your legs. Suck the knees back. And then we can articulate the spine up again. From the top, lower the arms. And we're going to move into our side kicks now. So let's lay on your right side. Pop yourself up on your elbow. Or you can absolutely use the um, lay your arm. Out straight, you lay your head on your arm. So from here, lengthen through your legs, flex at the feet, legs forward about 30 degrees. If you want more challenge, both hands behind your head. This would add to the difficulty considerably. So you'll pick up the top leg, flexing the foot. Inhale to slide the leg forward. Reach back to the sit front and pulse one, two. Flex the foot, take the leg back, and reach behind you, pulse one, two times. Flex to go forward. Double pulse, reach to the back, double pulse. So one of the goals is to be perfectly stable with your torso laying on its side. So you definitely don't want to be leaning forward as the leg goes back. And similarly, you don't want to lean back as the leg goes forward. Just take it back one more time. Reach and stretch to the sole of the foot, come back to center. And let's lift the leg, hip height, rotate internally and externally. Spin the leg from the socket, from the hip joint. And keep reaching out with the leg a little bit. And with an external rotation, lower the heel, heel. Make her point the foot to kick the leg up, flex the foot to lower it down. Drag the legs apart, lift, flex all the way down long. One more time, point to lift, flex to close, now reverse. Flex up, point and reach out and down. Flex to lift, point stretch it away. Let's up once more. Point all the way down, double K, bend. Move into the armpit, lift the foot, flex, and press it down. So you glide it in, you pick up the knee, you extend the leg, you flex and press it away. One more. Drag it in, still look straight ahead. Try not to look at your foot. Reverse, go up with the straight leg, flex foot, point, bend, and then skate the leg all the way down, reach long to lift, point, and bend. Forward all the way. One more time here. And glide it down. Now run to jump. Inhale forward, up, back, around, 
and through center. This is the one where it's hardest to hold the body steady on the mat, really press your bottom leg into the ground and pull that bottom elbow towards your armpit. Now let's reverse. I find it helpful too to imagine a big X drawn on the front of my body where my oblique lines are, and also one on my back. And try to hold those X's stable. So that length of your shortening any part of that figure X. Complete the circle. Now we're going to go into an advanced exercise here, um, the advanced bicycle. So we're going to stretch the top arm forward, the top leg back. Kick the leg forward to your hand, hold it wherever you can. Pull the knee into your chest, embrace it in tight. Hand to the foot, heel of the butt, swing the knee back, give you a quad stretch, lower the knee if it's lifted to be the same height as your hip bone, and then extend arm and leg on the diagonal stretch. That's good. And again, inhale, kick the leg to the hand. The hand will also move to the leg. And then fold the knee in, reach out for your sits bone here. Take your hand to the foot, you sweep the knee back. If you're tightening the edge, then it will want to lift. And then we're going to release arm and leg, stretch out on the diagonal line. One more, kick the leg forward, reach back through the sits bone, get the hamstring stretched. Hold it in, compress it in. And then open up your quad, stretch your psoas as you push the knee behind you, release arm and leg on the diagonal. Now we reverse it. So as you lift the arm, you're folding the knee. Bringing your heel to your sits bone behind you. Pull it in as tight as you can to get the quad stretch and push the knee back. And now we exhale to pull the knee into your chest. Inhale, extend the leg out. Hand to the leg as close to the foot as possible. Exhale, release the arm and the leg on the diagonal. And again, you circle the arm up slowly as you bend the knee. Pull the heel in towards your sits bone. Push the knee back behind you. Feel the quad stretch, right? Now pull the knee into your chest, embrace it in. Gives you a little stretch across the glute. Forward, stretch it out, hamstring leg, and then reach arm and leg here. Opposite stretch. That was excellent. Okay, so let's come to your figure four. Go down, and then we put the bottom leg up and then down. And have a lift and then lower. You know, up and then down. One more lift and down you go. Now lift, hold it up and circle around and up. One, two, three, hold it at the top, reverse. Circle around and up. One, two, three, reach out and then lower it down. Extend your bottom arm out and then bring your top hand to it. Fingertips together. Bring a little basket here out of your hand and you can slide the leg back maybe 10 degrees from the line of your spine. So press the bottom part of your body into the ground, lift the top leg up, and we're going to bring the bottom leg up to meet it and the bottom leg lowers. Bottom leg lifts, bottom leg down, bottom leg up, bottom leg down, bottom leg lifts and holds. Now top leg up, top leg down, top leg high. And then down, once more to lift and lower. Now the bottom leg is still off the floor. You're gonna pick the top leg up with that bottom leg and bring it all the way to the ground. So you lift it. Watch you're not flexing at the waist. Lift again and lower. Now we lift and we hold and we do little walks. And then big giant gliding, striding swings of your legs. Hold that bottom leg off of the ground here. And pivoting from the upper outer hip. That's where you feel the pressure into the floor. Bring the legs to center, lift them again, lower them. And we're on our stomachs now for that Overlap the hands under the forehead, legs and turn out, lift the legs from the glutes and tap. Open and close. Outer thigh, inner thigh. To work the legs here. Knees as straight as possible. But definitely think of keeping the upper thigh as much off the ground as you can. One more breath. 
and then lower down the child's throat. Stretch out your back, drop your head. Our position will vary depending on what you like, either forward or back alongside your legs. Stack this line from the bottom to the top. And then we're going to the other side. So you choose the arm position that works for you today. And the legs start forward. What a nice little kickstand there using the legs to help your support. Okay. And we bring the top leg up, flexing the foot. Inhale, pull it forward and pulse one, two. Point the foot, take it back and reach back one and two. Legs to go forward, point to take it back. Watch your body isn't leaning away from your legs, so a little bit more support there for your core. And that's hard, particularly when the leg goes back because of tightness in the psoas. It's also hard when the leg goes forward depending on tightness in the hamstring. So limit your range to be sure that your body stays stable. Come back to center and lower, then lift the leg hip height, and lift it internally and externally from the hip joints. Give yourself that spin. The waist is calm, the pelvic girdle is calm, the leg is turning. And then externally rotate, lower heel to heel, point the foot, lift the leg high in the air, we flex the foot to bring it down and long. Drag it up, flex and push it away. One more, point to rise, flex all the way down, reversing, flex to lift, point stretch it out. Flex to lift it up, point to lengthen it down, one more like that. And double K. Bend the knee up to the ceiling. Pull the knee to the chest, lift the foot to the ceiling, flex and reach out and down. So you drag it in, pick up the leg, extend the leg, flex and reach down low. One more, drag it in, stretch, flex all the way down. Reverse, lift up high, point the foot, bend the knee, inch towards your ear, go to the leg and slide it forward. Flex to rise, point and bend. Exhale all the way out and down, full length with both legs. Lift once more, point, bend, and reach it out. Rondes is wrong, big circle. Again, watch your stability. Circle here. Nice, short inhale, long exhale. Complete the circle, let's reverse. Take it back, rotate the leg on the joint. Come all the way around to your center. So the more you can pull your head away from your hips, the more stable your center will be. And then for the advanced bicycle, we take the top arm forward, the top leg back, stretch it out. Again, the body is stable on your side. Kick the leg forward to your hand, hold the knee into your chest. Inhale with the heel to the butt, swing the knee back. Exhale, release arm and leg on the diagonal line. And again, bottom leg presses into the ground, top leg pulls to the top hand. Hold the knee in, swing the knee back, release arm and leg, stretch them out here. One more time. Take it forward, hold it in, reach it back, lengthen out. Now reverse, up with the arm, and pull the leg behind you, go to the glute, pull the knee into your chest wall, Extend it out, stretch it, and then sweep the arm and leg away from each other. Good job. And again, the arm rises as you pull the leg. Don't let the knee lift. Pull it back and then pull it in. Extend it out. Arm and leg go in the diagonal line. We do one more. The arm rises as you pull the knee, pull the heel into your system behind your body, stretch out your quad. Pull the knee into your chest, stretch the leg, lengthen the hamstring. And then release arm and leg. Figure four. Bottom leg lifts and then lower. Goes up and then down. Lifts here and down again. Lift and hold it up. Circle around to one, two, three. Come to the top. Reach out, reverse. Circling around to one, two. Nice smooth circles. Three. Come to the top. Pause the lengthen and then bring it down. We're going to lay the legs out, swing the back a little bit, 
lay your head on your arm. You're gonna press that bottom arm into the ground, take the top arm to it if you can. And then we're lifting the, the top leg up. Balance here to bring the bottom leg up and then the bottom leg down. Bottom leg lifts and then lowers. Bottom leg up and down. Really press your bottom arm into the floor to help you stabilize. Now lift that bottom leg, hold it there, top leg up and down. Top leg lifts and lowers, top leg up and down. Now the bottom leg's still off the ground. It pushes the top leg up and brings it to the floor. Good, lift it and then lower both legs. The top leg is dead weight. The bottom leg is doing all the work here. Now we're gonna lift the legs and do little walks and then huge giant swinging sliding steps. Again, try not to rock your hips or let your body roll here on your mat. Come back to center, lift the legs, take them down and we can roll onto our backs here. both knees into your chest. All right, and we're just going to go into a couple of teasers to end. So extend the legs forward. Arms at your side, pump the right. You could use a fair bend around your feet if this hasn't normally been in your practice. So you're coming up with your head, neck, and your chest, slide the arms forward, sweep the legs up from underneath to come up to a balance point on your sacrum. If necessary, pull the knees in a little bit to make that easier. And then you're going to look at your toes, push the legs away as you roll your spine down. Be careful that you get down to your sacrum because the legs get so low that you arch your back. Go all the way down here and we rise again. So coming up, shake your chest, lift, pull up here, and work your way down, down the back, toes at a level. Work your way down here. Get down with the heels and the blades touching at the same time. One more time to come up. Find your teaser. And down we go. Turn around a little bit first and press the legs away. To find the balance point in your body so you can control it on the way down. Y'all did great. What a nice job. So pull both knees into your chest, pull forward and up to sitting. And we're just gonna end with some seal. So take your hands between your legs, drop back on your sacrum and open and close the legs, clapping three times. Let the tail roll back to your shoulder blades, clap one, two, three, come up and clap one, two, three. Looking at your abs, bring your balance on the shoulders, to really lift your tail in the air. But even a moment of suspension can be a useful thing here. And one final one. Going straight down the back and then straight back up to finish your Pilates practice, well, at least for this hour. All right. And great job, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Thanks. And I'll see you soon.